11 Shows to Watch If You Like the Boys Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry Cooper and this is Marvelous Videos. The insanely rising popularity of The Boys is no fluke if you consider the uniqueness of the show. The makers have utilized people's love for the superhero genre and added a fresh twist that made the series so very entertaining. The comic series by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson has been brought to life by the creator and showrunner Eric Kripke, and so far the response has been overwhelming to say the least. It tells the story of power and attention-hungry superheroes who are the actual bad guys and the vigilantes who try to expose the real nature of these celebrity heroes. With blood, gore, drama and conspiracy, the show has everything that you'd love. And considering the massive fan following, in this video we decided to bring you some similar shows that might take your fancy. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. Kids with cancer. The Kardashians. Preacher, 2016 to 2019. This TV series has a common name that you'll also find in The Boys. Seth Rogen, one of the developers for Preacher, worked as a producer for The Boys. The series is based on a comic series by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, and it tells the story of an alcoholic, disillusioned preacher who has encountered a crisis of faith. When he suddenly receives the gift of extraordinary power, he teams up with his assassin ex-girlfriend and an alcohol-soaked vampire named Cassidy on an epic journey to find God. The journey takes them through multiple challenges and they have to deal with a crazy world populated by all kinds of characters from heaven and hell. The action-packed bloody violence and the general theme of the narrative are bound to remind you of the boys. Dark fantasy bolstered by a heavy dose of black humor is exactly the kind of stuff that interests those with a taste for shows like the boys. Preacher is a closely faithful adaptation of the source material and the episodes are constructed such that you will feel an overwhelming urge to check out the next one. The very first episode introduces some of the important characters and the story moves to and fro to explain all that's happening around you. One of the showrunners, Sam Catlin, is the co-producer of Breaking Bad with a major role in the storytelling and his skills show in this one as well. In terms of the cast, Dominic Cooper is a great choice for the titular character and he effortlessly slips into the various shades of the role. Others like Ruth Negger and Joseph Gilgan are also impeccable in their parts and it's fun to watch the chemistry between them. There are some hilarious moments and the visuals look surprisingly real. In short, the show is truly binge-worthy, and the unique blend of pulp elements makes it a must-watch for fans. Here's your cool. The Umbrella Academy, 2019. October 1989 witnessed a strange event where 43 infants were born to random women who had no signs of pregnancy prior to delivery. Following this bizarre event, a billionaire named Sir Reginald Hargreaves adopted seven of these special babies and he trained them so that they could become saviors of the world one day. He called this the Umbrella Academy, but the family drifted apart because of certain differences when the kids were teenagers. Now, six surviving members of the Umbrella Academy reunite after their father's mysterious death, and they realize that a serious threat looms around the world. However, their personal differences keep coming in between them, and it remains to be seen if they can work together as a potent force. Yes, the show is a futuristic shadow of the X-Men, but people started to dig the innovative premise and the thrilling narrative. Season 1 takes some time to get going, but once everything is set in motion, Season 2 truly expands on the best parts of the inaugural run. This series is unexpectedly brilliant, and the actors are well cast for their respective roles. There is a generous dose of humor and the effects have been handled with expertise. In fact, there is one fully CG character who looks absolutely stunning and visually there are no complaints regarding the quality. The narrative has some powerful emotional moments and the action gets pretty wacky at times. Beside the X-Men resemblance, the series is bound to appeal to those who appreciate shows like The Boys. It's a thorough entertainer and the story of a family with superpowers never really gets boring. With season three around the corner, we expect nothing short of the excellence that we have been used to so far.
Happy 2017. Nick Sachs used to be a cop, but his corrupt ways have turned him into a hitman. He regularly runs into trouble, has had a trail of failed relationships, and both the cops and the mob are on his tail. He wakes up in a hospital after a serious injury, but he realizes that there is something more troublesome than his wound. He can see a tiny, imaginary blue-winged unicorn named Happy that claims to be his daughter's imaginary friend. This perky unicorn claims that his daughter is in deep trouble, and together they set out on a journey that has threats on every corner. This happens to be an adaptation of a story by Grant Morrison, and the story has been handled with a wonderfully dark and crazy touch. There are twists and turns every now and then, and you get to witness some truly memorable characters in the process. The narrative is outrageous and immoral, and this is not a show for kids by any means. The protagonist is a hothead with a million flaws, and Christopher Maloney slips into the character effortlessly. He brings in his experience of playing similar roles, and his imaginary friend, voiced by Patton Oswalt, is equally impressive. The writers keep pushing the limits with this one, and there are some disturbing moments that will be right up the alley for those who like the boys. There are some violent, over-the-top action sequences as well, and the creators simply don't hold back on these. The show didn't become widely popular, but we can vouch for the cult following that it's developed over time. Let's just hope that someone realises the true worth of this series, and brings out a fitting Season 3 to give it the right closure. Doom Patrol 2019 DC Comics left the fans intrigued with their band of scarred and disfigured superheroes with strange abilities, and Doom Patrol really comes to life in the TV series. These outcast superheroes include the likes of Robot Man, Elastigirl, Negative Man, and Crazy Jane, and they're led by a scientist named Dr. Niles Calder, who isn't exactly normal himself. All of these superheroes have suffered some kind of terrible accident to earn them their superpowers, along with a few disabilities, and Dr. Calder gave them a purpose in their lives. The world might want nothing to do with them, but they continue to fight for them. The series explores the adventures of this group of superpowered misfits, and it puts together a perfect psychological superhero drama. With the abundance of superhero content nowadays, only the ones that stand out are the ones that catch our fancy. Doom Patrol is undoubtedly different from the others because of the weird premise and extraordinary storylines. It's technically a spin-off of Titans, but there are some subtle inconsistencies as well. The episodes grow on you with gentle characters character development, elements of dark comedy, and an effortless transition in storytelling from the past to the present. The actors have done a commendable job, and from Diane Guerrero to Brendan Fraser, everyone has lived up to the expectations of the fans. Some episodes are outright crazy, but there is never a shortage of entertainment with bizarre things happening all around. DC has certainly upped their game with this one, and if you happen to be a comic geek, the show will hit just the right spot. Season 4 of Doom Patrol has been announced, and if you're a fan of the boys, you should waste no no time in going for this underrated piece of art. Watchmen 2019 Alan Moore is a special name for comic book fans, and his graphic novel in the 80s Watchmen created quite a stir back then. This series is more of a sequel to the events of the comics. The story is set in an alternate timeline, where history unfolded differently than what we know. Masked vigilantes are treated like outlaws, and you get introduced to vigilantes on both sides of the law. A few mysterious murders, some poisonous conspiracies, and a suspense-filled story make this a must-watch for those looking for something out of the box. It's been a common complaint that the show isn't an accurate representation of the graphic novel, but we beg to differ. Essentially, the Watchmen comic was about the fear and anxiety in society in the 80s, and the show simply translates that to modern times. We enjoyed the intelligent writing, and the subtle connections made by the writers to continue from where the graphic novel left off are quite interesting. Several plot points unfold before you, and plenty of dark characters keep the viewers guessing the whole time. The narrative echoes the concept of a complex morality, and a group of extremely talented actors see to it that the complications of the characters are simplified on screen. Regina King and Jeremy Irons steal the show in particular, and this new take on Watchmen deserves a chance from those looking for a superhero story with a twist. Yes, the show is quite political, but we chose to focus more on the entertainment aspect, and we weren't disappointed.
Legion 2017. There's a thin line between psychological disorders and superhuman abilities, and Legion takes you on a journey to witness the chaotic world in between. The series introduces us to a young man named David Haller, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia as a child. He's a frequent visitor to psychiatric hospitals, but his uneventful regular life is turned upside down following the arrival of a new patient. This beautiful lady, Sid, immediately attracts the attention of David, and he soon learns about some extraordinary powers that he never knew he had. Had. As it turns out, there's a lot more to him than his mental illness and it's time to utilize his superpowers. The show is adapted from a Marvel comic book and it certainly represents a refreshing and different side of Marvel that we haven't witnessed a lot. The weirdness of the show and the surreal nature of the narrative are a lot crazier than usual and the creators handle a tricky subject like insanity quite well. The story takes you into the confused mind of the protagonist, but the fractured storytelling never really hinders your understanding. The impressive visuals are sure to blow your mind and the outside standing soundtrack fits the bill perfectly. Legion's origin story is quite intriguing, and as the son of Charles Xavier, this character has a lot of scope for future plot lines. The unexpected violence will please the gore hounds, but it's not so graphic that you'll be disturbed. The acting performances are not out of this world, but the likes of Dan Stevens, Aubrey Plaza, Bill Irwin and Rachel Keller are decent enough in their respective roles. If you're a fan of exploring the stories of the odd man out superheroes, this one will fit the bill. Jupiter's Legacy 2021. It's never easy for the kids of superstars to walk in the shoes of their legendary parents, and the struggle isn't much different for the superhero kids out there. The show brings you a group of new generation superheroes who must rise up to the challenge of new threats that are coming up. Their parents have successfully protected the world for years, and now it's their turn to continue the legacy. However, things are easier said than done, and these superheroes of the new era have plenty of issues to deal with. Jupiter's Legacy is a series that captures the drama of family dynamics, dilemmas, and struggles with superpowers through a fluent storytelling that never ceases to entertain. The initial plan was to turn this into a movie, but the extensive backstories meant that the makers had to settle for a TV series. The build-up is slow but steady, and once the story gets rolling, the series will keep you glued to your seat. The plot and character development take precedence over action, and this is something that annoyed some of the fans. However, we appreciate the different approach, and the horror and psychological thriller flavor in the narrative makes up for the lack of action. There are some sudden twists that the viewers will find hard to digest, and the flashbacks are nicely arranged to give you adequate context. Josh Dumel, Ben Daniels, and the other members of the cast do not disappoint, and neither do the special effects. If you appreciate the boys for the alternate superhero storyline, this one should catch your attention as well. The only disappointing thing was the abrupt cancellation of the show after the first season. Clearly, it had the potential for a much longer run, but it's believed that budgetary constraints and relatively shabby ratings brought about the downfall. Studios really need to rethink their strategy of cancelling shows so quickly without giving them the time to breathe. Peacemaker. This show was created as a spin-off from the 2021 movie The Suicide Squad, and the narrative follows the events of the film. After the injuries Christopher Smith, aka Peacemaker, suffered during the events of the movie, he is now forced to join a special ops squad, Argus, for a mission called Project Butterfly. The group is tasked with destroying certain deadly parasitic butterfly-like creatures who have taken over human bodies all over the world. The menace has to be stopped before it's too late, and the jingoistic killer is just the right guy for the job, because Peacemaker Peacemaker doesn't shy away from harsh decisions or taking lives when required. Peacemaker is like a breath of fresh air that takes you on a joyride with the most ridiculous and outrageous things happening around you. The only problem is that we have no idea about the titular character because we simply can't see anyone there. Jokes aside, John Cena is actually the driving force in the series, and he's proven that he's no dud when it comes to acting. James Gunn was reportedly so impressed by Cena's acting skills during Suicide Squad that he developed the show to star him separately. The COVID quarantine gave him plenty of time to pen the story, but he never really expected it to be considered seriously by the producers. The narrative is purposely juvenile, and the outlandish storytelling actually works in favour of making the show so entertaining. It's quite surprising that James Gunn managed to pull this off on a low budget, because the special effects and aesthetics of the show are spot on. If you want to enjoy a light-hearted superhero show with incredibly good writing, Peacemaker should be on your watch list. The Punisher 2017 
The Punisher is a spin-off from the previous Marvel series Daredevil, and you get to see the iconic vigilante The Punisher back in action. Following the tragic murder of his wife and kids, Frank Castle becomes the ruthless vigilante who doesn't mind taking up violent methods to fight crime. He gets his revenge on those responsible, but it soon dawns on him that a far greater conspiracy is surrounding New York and its underworld. Will he now fight for the greater good and deliver justice like the good old superheroes? There's more to being a hero than a personal vendetta. We're suckers for a gritty, dark narrative with a generous dose of violence, and a show like The Punisher fits the bill perfectly. The protagonist himself is one of the most badass anti-heroes that you'll encounter, and the show builds up his storyline brilliantly. John Bernthal, as the titular character, is the heart of the show, and this underrated actor is easily one of the best Punishers we've had to date. The series has a few shocking moments, and deaths are plentiful and random. There is a lot of blood and violence, and the show is certainly not for the faint-hearted. The fast-paced narrative never gets interrupted, and the two main villains are just as wild and wicked as the vigilante fighting them. The second season throws up some interesting surprises and twists, and the entire show promises some intense action scenes. Those who love shows like The Boys will dig the dark tone of the series, and the story of a damaged man fighting against all the odds will draw you into the drama. Unfortunately, this series turned out to be the latest Marvel casualty and got cancelled prematurely. We'd love to see more of John Bernthal as the Punisher, and more of this raw, dark storytelling. When it's 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, you idiot, it looks ah! The Boys presents Diabolical. Now that you've watched and acclimatized to something like The Boys, you might be prepared for something more graphic. The Boys presents Diabolical is an animated anthology series that derives heavily from the comic book series by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. The stories are all in The Boys universe and various animation styles and techniques are adapted for the eight episodes to present this wacky but humorous series. This is the strangest collection of dark and violent animated episodes with some of the weirdest stories that you can imagine. You you will find some actual characters from the boys, and there are a few easter eggs scattered around the show. Anthology shows are not essentially people pleasers, and this series has also disappointed some who were looking for continuity. However, that doesn't really hurt the quality of the show, and the diverse episodes keep things exciting the whole time. If we had to pick favourites, we'd go for episode 3 and episode 8 because of the Homelander and Billy Butcher connection. The last episode in particular closes out the series nicely, and offers an interesting backstory. The voice acting is nothing to complain about either, and the quality of animation doesn't disappoint. Be prepared to handle some over-the-top violence and graphic content, and accept the fact that some weird stuff is going to happen in almost every episode. If you can handle the emotionally shocking moments and the random nature of the narrative, you'll have fun with this one. The Boys fans should definitely check this out, even if it's just for the couple of episodes with nice background stories. Titans 2018. This is not the take on Teen Titans we needed, but the one we deserved. We love this gritty take on the franchise as the series explores the life of the young heroes as they gear up for greater threats. Dick Grayson and Rachel Roth are caught up in a sinister conspiracy, but they have some help in the form of Starfire and Beast Boy. The unlikely team of heroes gets together to fight evil in what is a historic series, the first live-action incarnation of Teen Titans. The first season of Titans showed some promise, but the makers failed to maintain the quality and the expectations of the fans in the following seasons. That being said, the show is not terrible, and there are some memorable moments when you look back. The characters are interesting, and Dick Grayson leads the way as the protagonist who has left Batman behind, but still has a taste for heroism. He's involved in some violent fight scenes, and he has a team that backs him up quite nicely. The production values don't appear to be cheap, and the dialogues aren't as cheesy as some might imagine. The writing could have been a little better, but some quality acting performances from the likes of Brenton Thwaites, Ryan Potter, Anna Diop and the others have raised the bar. Overall, Titans is definitely worth a watch, and it has a little something every now and then for fans of the boys. Our final words. 
There's no denying the fact that every show is special and unique in its own way. You can't have two blatantly similar shows because there will be no point in making one in the first place. However, the ones that we've mentioned in this video will be the closest that you can find to the boys. Some share similarities in the themes, while others deal with weird and wacky superheroes. Some contain the kind of outrageously graphic violence that you find in the boys, while others contain similar characters. Overall, you can try them out if the genre tickles your fancy, and do let us know in the comments below about the ones you like the most. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.